Hello everybody and welcome to Against the Fence. This is the place to be if you're obsessed and passionate about the UFC. And in today's video, we're going to be speaking to a very special guest, Vince Morales. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. You're currently on a five-fight win streak since somehow getting cut for the UFC. I put the somehow in there because, again... <laughs> You know what I mean? It's, it's got to be done. Four of your five fights have been by finishes. Like, so what's your like, sort of overall thoughts on that? Where's your head at after them f four finishes in uh, five fights since, obviously, unfortunately, getting cut from the UFC? I think, I think the main thing that uh, I don't want to say has changed but has yeah. developed since since getting released has been like um, my my mind and my, my approach going into the fights. I think a lot of my UFC fights, I was more or less – I was kind of kept in a box because I was trying to yeah. get in there and fight to win and mm. fight to not lose. And and I, yeah. I think that was kind of the wrong approach for my style. I think I do much better when I'm getting in there to fight. Yeah. Right? So I go in there and I fight and I try to break these people. And I think the proof's in the pudding in that, dude, it, that, that yes. seems to be the way to go. So I'm doubling down on that this for this run. And, and yeah, I, I can't wait to get in there and perform. No, 100%. Like you said there, the proof is definitely in the pudding with the four the four finishes in the, the five fights. So just to touch on that, is there anything sort of that's, that's changed, like like any adjustments that you've sort of made in, in camp or anything like that, just in, in those fights, in the, those fights, sorry? I think my main thing, I, I really made sure that I took the time away from the UFC to try some of the stuff that I do in the gym in the fight. Yeah. Because it, I, I, I was in the UFC at a fairly, like, young MMA age. So like, I think less than 10 fights. So it's kind of hard to develop beyond that mm. because uh, I was a blue belt there. So I was a little insecure yeah. about that and just a few things. So uh, yeah, this time away, I was like, dude, I got to like, if, if you really want to do this, you're really going to have to go and be an MMA fighter. So I took yeah. the time to try to apply some of the rest of my game and, Lo and behold, I think we have a couple of new strengths to show. As we all know, you're stepping on a short notice to fight uh, Taylor. Is it Lapalus uh, <laughs> at UFC Paris? So how did how did this sort of like come into play? Did, did it call for the manager or anything like that? Yeah, my manager was FaceTiming me after sparring on Tuesday, which I thought was weird. Um, like, what are you FaceTiming me for? <laughs> yeah. And immediately, like my hope, my hopes got up. I've tried to jump in for so many damn short notice fights that I had to really level myself out right away. Mm. I was like, oh, hold on, don't get too <laughs> excited. And then, uh. And then, yeah, he's just like, hey, bud, how you doing? I'm like, good, man. What's up? Hmm. And he's like, well, uh, how's your weight? And I was like, weight's always good. I was like, why? Why do you ask? What's going on? <laughs> and then he's, uh, and he just said, I was like, well, how do you feel about going to Paris? I was like, because <laughs> I had tweeted out in the morning that like I, I'd, I'd step in there and fight. <laughs> yeah, they I, were I looking see for that an opponent yeah, still. I see that so tweet, I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, put me in. And uh, <laughs> and I was like, no, for Lapalus? And he said, yeah. I was like, dude, let's go. I was like, sign me up. Wow. I'm, I'm ready. And immediately i kind of locked in so like emotions cut and everything i was like mm. boom i gotta go fight this guy and i just like uh i zoned i kind of zoned into myself yeah. and uh i was still on the phone and then i realized he's facetiming me because he wants a reaction so i was like yeah. i was like oh <laughs> shit so i had to like had to dig dig in and like pull out some of the emotion of it just so i, I can show that because uh yeah i just kind of locked into the task at hand <laughs> love that it, it, like obviously your, your manager facetiming your things but before you even sort of thought of your opponent or uh, maybe seen any sort of tweets that you could potentially sort of openings for your opponent it was just a straight yes wasn't it was there any sort of who's your po uh, opponent it was just a yes wasn't it yeah it was just a yes doesn't yeah. really matter who who it is yeah. at this point uh <laughs> wh whatever it takes to get me back in i, I was gonna do so yeah. it just so happens i gotta go across the world into enemy territory to do it yeah Sign oh. me up, dude. I like being a villain. <laughs> yeah. Love that. That's quality. You seem to fight two to three times a year. Obviously, the last time you fought four times was back in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, after this fight um, at the weekend, do you reckon you'll try and squeeze one more fight in? I'd like to get another one in before the end of the year, just because yeah. uh, like, I think four is kind of a sweet spot. Like, yeah. I, I always try to get like three to four. Anytime mm. I've had two, like it, it's been, I don't know, it's just not active enough for yeah. me. I, I, like, yeah. I, like to stay, I like to stay going. And mm. like this MMA window that we have for our life is kind of short and and... I'm 33 now, so I'm yeah. trying to make the most out of every single go. So I'd yeah. like to get in before the end of the year. If something opens up, um, maybe I can be the, the company man that's like, dude, put me in short notice again, yeah. whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'll be yeah, ready for it. it. Can't let you go without mentioning Marab. Obviously, Marab uh, becoming champion. Was you kind of around his camp during um, at all or anything? Yeah, the whole, the whole camp, really. Oh, wow. Um, okay. uh, I wasn't his main training partner for yeah. this one. Um, the, the, he, brought in, he brought in this sick Georgian kickboxer that did a good wow. job like emulating – uh, O'Malley style yeah. so that was his main training partner but um I was definitely I was definitely there for a part of it and he was looking like a nightmare going yeah. throughout throughout camp so I couldn't be happier for the dude he made it look kind of 
easy. I thought, I yeah, was like, yeah. Wow. I wasn't expecting that, which um, I think that motivated the rest of us in the gym too, because we've all been like, I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> we've all yeah. been like a little extra fired up at practice and stuff. And just being like, dude, like Rob's kind of leading, leading the way for us. And, mm -hmm. and this is the kind of skill that we have in the room. And yeah, yeah we just got to go out there and he does, he does better than anybody. He puts, he puts effort into everything yeah. he's doing. So going yeah. out there and putting effort into fights, dude. No, a hundred percent. I spoke to Matt earlier in the week and like he said, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. And obviously again, like you just mentioned, they worked so hard for it and, mad to think that obviously from where he came from and, and things like that in the background and and now he's, he's world champion and, and just to touch on what you said there as well made it look easy as well like uh, i can't believe o'malley's coming out and trying to say that he won uh three round uh three rounds out of the five that maybe the fifth round uh could have been his with that maybe that cheap, maybe maybe the fifth. Could, I had a just because he was little, looking at it yeah so i mean just because of that cheap kick towards the end he did have yeah. had him a little bit sort of weathered but yeah you, you know more i'll be a stick with it yeah i'm hoping o'malley's just kind of trolling with that because yeah as as like a as a martial artist I, I, having that sort of mindset i think can limit our growth and yeah. well for me anyway so this <laughs> this reflects back to me in the like the miles johns fight yeah. Um, where it was it was kind of tit for tat and real close. Um, also boring as hell, which bugs yeah. me more than anything about it. Um, like if I would get too hung up on that, on the fact of like whatever I thought about how it went, it wouldn't yeah. allow me to develop. So I'm just we we got we gotta take what we can from it, focus on the yeah. controllables, and then grow. So I'm I'm hoping he's kind of just doing it for the cameras. You're officially my last oh, uh, wow, okay. interview, so dude, I'm 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 stoked. Yeah, it's good to, <laughs> good to good to talk good to talk to you. And uh, no, but right. yeah, I'm glad I spoke to you before. Obviously, you're you're fighting. I appreciate you, boys.